Hey folks, welcome back to what is absolutely, definitely the first time that I am recording K3. Yep, I love this. It's a good place. So I think this is the only level you weren't actually here for that practice stream, were you? Uh, no. This is the only one I did not see. Uh, we did a practice stream for this. And, uh, well, that's an easy bonus to get. I... Are we not doing the bonus? Well, you have to remember, I'm re-recording this. I already got the bonuses. Oh, I thought you were on a different save. <laughs> okay. So Creepin' Clasps is... It's not very difficult. There's... Yeah, there's coin, by the way. There's a TNT barrel off to the left there that you would use to destroy that bee. Uh. But yeah, it's... This is not a very hard level. Uh, <laughs> you were saying. There is... There's one thing, like, real late in the level that you'll see when we get there that it took me probably almost half an hour to figure out, like, a solid strat to get past it without eating a hit every time, but other than that, there's... This level's very straightforward. Hmm. It seems a lot faster than the original. And I don't know if that's just because you had squawks or, or what. Yeah, well, I feel like the original also had a bunch of... a lot more back-and-forth style stuff. Anyway, next bonus is directly beneath this. If you if we were to shoot down, we'd go into that bonus. I think it's it's probably because climbing on the ropes and avoiding the clasps takes up a little bit more time. Yeah, so right here, this this here, there's three clasps in a row, all of them fast. So that that left and right move took me forever to work out because Otherwise, like, I have no idea how you're actually supposed to dodge that. Hmm. That seemed right. I mean, you just kind of went through... Oh. He's faster than you. Yeah, he is. Claptraps have, been given, have given you quite a bit of trouble in these recordings. I mean, they said it's because they have that arbitrary distance that they can go, and like, is it? There's no way to know where where is safe. That's true. I kind of liked that level. That seemed pretty good. No, I I agree. I think that's actually it's a, a lot better than the original. I liked it a lot more. Anyway, first bonus is unchanged. If we were to... It, it's directly below that barrel right before the start. You just shoot diagonally down. Now, I have paid attention to most of the stream. Because I was... I don't remember what I was doing. Oh, I was looking at romhacking.net trying to figure out what other things we can play. There are no other DK games. Say, the answer, as it turned out, was not much. Not Donkey Kong. As usual, most of the difficulty in these just comes from, oh, you have to make this jump perfectly, and oh, you didn't touch that? Well, you're fucked. You didn't make this jump perfectly? Well then. I mean, I would fall out of that thing if I crashed into a cabin, too. Well, I think part of the thing that I don't like about the way he does, or at least the way that this game does the toboggan levels, is that when you get hit, it gives you that slight boost. So a lot of the times, what ends up happening is you get knocked out of something where you were safe, but because after you take the damage, it gives you that little jump, and then that is what usually fucks you. I think it's like that in all of the games. But it's still... The toboggan is really fast. Like, it is... it is faster than... 
it is faster than the, the roller coaster most of the time, as well as the minecarts. I think we kind of went over it when we were in Mechanos, why it's just kind of different. There's there's nothing really to say about barrel drop bounce in general. This it's largely I, just, I mean it's not exactly the same level, but it's largely the same level. It was honestly even in the original, it was just kind of there. The 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 falling barrels are not a particularly like strong gimmick in a game that usually has very much like on the nose, this is the gimmick type gimmicks. Sure, you gotta use them to climb up stuff, but it's it's very it's it's mild, I guess. I guess? I don't know, like I don't really know how to describe it. I don't either, but it's not like spec it's not like spectac killer. <laughs> almost almost had a disaster there. But it's okay, because I remembered that this is where one of the bonuses is, and I missed it the first time. Perfect. So it, t it works out in the end. Yeah, I don't really know how to describe it necessarily. It's just something about it. It's not a particularly, like, memorable level, aside from that four-barrel drop that you have to do at the midpoint. And that's why I remember it, because that one's just like, it, it just got me so much as a kid. I could not get that timing down. I feel like it would be a better level, honestly, if it committed to having more of that kind of thing. Of, like, doing more of those kind of bigger set-piece kind of jumps, but... That would probably also make it a lot harder than they intended it to be, so... Yeah. It also probably doesn't help that the level is sandwiched between a toboggan level, one or two in the game, and the crack shot level. I mean, say what you will about crack shot croc. Uh, it is definitely a strong, memorable gimmick. Exactly. And the toboggan, if you like those sorts of levels, you're going to remember them. Alright, I believe it's right here, but if we would fly off to the left with Dixie, that's where the second bonus is. Not this way. That's, this is because this is where it drops you off. Whoa, you somehow didn't get chomped. You can probably tell right about here is the point where I'm like, wait, fuck, where was this bonus again? <laughs> and that is the hard part. It's, uh, in a ROM hack, when stuff is required, you have to try and figure out, like, how is the hacker going to, like, hide something like this? I don't know the person or anything, but how might they hide a thing? And these bonuses are definitely the sort of thing, like... You gotta think, where in the world did they could they have put this? I know, I've always... I, and like I said, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this back in the... Uh, back in Cotton Top Coat, but like... I don't like the waterfall levels in general, just because they look... They are so samey. Just visually. And it's so hard to remember exactly where you are at any given time. So it's like, oh, did I, wait, shit, did I go up, did I go, did I check off to the left here or over there or did I jump, did I follow this one down? It's about the point you can see I just gave up, I'm like whatever, I'll come back to I'll it later. Get it later. Yeah, it's just kind of like another another 
game that has a lot of that is, is Super Metroid hacks. Trying to find 100% in those, it's almost never advised because you have to, I mean, even the original has a lot of, like, shoot everything to find all the, the things. Use power bombs everywhere. But you gotta, like, also then deal with the assholes making the game. I don't know, it's just, it's very hard to... I can't believe that you don't know how Steve from Accounting would hide all 100 collectibles in Super Metroid. <laughs> it's hard enough to get some of the, the main power-ups in a lot of these things. That one-up balloon was absolutely worth it, thank you for asking. I'm glad I was here to see it. So, my biggest complaint about this level is... Like I said, I don't know if it's tied to whether certain enemies are on screen or what, but... It's very inconsistent about whether or not it gives you the audio cue for, Hey, you're about to get shot! It's, um... It's probably a mixture of... just let that play out. It's probably a mixture of the sound effect from that and Squitter's webs sharing the same sound effect channel, or the bees also. Like, it, too many sounds playing at once, there's not enough audio channels to have stuff play, so it's a matter of sound priority. Like there, when you got the, the bonus, or uh, the, the the star barrel, the sound effect cut off because I guess the crack shot croc firing is a higher priority than it. But yeah, so um, that happens to me a lot in this level where I'm like going and the only time I know I'm getting shot is if I happen to glance and see that it's like starting to turn white. Which is incredibly unfortunate when you're, say, in a very narrow, cramped corridor and cannot actually do much to get out of the way. I, I don't know what you're talking about. That wouldn't happen, would it? Oh, speaking of the crack shot croc, we're going to show this off real quick. This was a fun thing we found during the stream. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to show this off. That's not fair. That breaks the rules. I was gonna say, I have some complaints about the construction of your factory. Look, Steve from accounting put it together. What would we just say about him? Oh. Good old squitter platform priority there. I guess it's it's what? You gotta be on the platform, otherwise it disappears. Yeah, it's like you can only have two of them out at once, and if you try to shoot a third, it will delete the one that's close, that's farthest away from you. And if you bounce on one more than like twice, it'll delete it. There's a couple of weird things that go with it. There's two problems. Er, there's there's two problems I see with this level. The first is that it's it's really open in its climbs, and then really narrow in its passages. Like it's it's weird because it, it's it's weird to say the level is is too open, but also too narrow. Also the best bonus in the entire game. Yeah, it's, it's a weird complaint, but... I mean, it makes sense. It's because you can... Like, one being true doesn't make the other... Like, it's totally possible to, ha to have that sort of... Like, they can both be true at the same time. It's not like 
Yeah. Yeah, you could have a... You can totally have wide-open levels that also happen to feature super narrow corridors you can't really maneuver around in. But yeah, no, it's it's absolutely true. Like, going left and right really fucking sucks, and then going up and down is... just kind of insultingly easy. Yeah. Because left and right has the big old vats. And then up and down just kind of has bees, and Squitter can deal with bees no matter what's going on, as long as they're not red bees. And the croc is never that difficult to deal with, but... Oh! Nice job. It was such a good troll that I fell for it twice. Coin's back there. Yeah, in case you can't tell, that's coin behind that big grate. Ah yes, Lem Lemguin Lunge, otherwise known as Where the Lemguins. Hey, hey, they're in the level at the very end. Garbage enemy, the, the hacker realized this 10 out of 10 design. I will recommend to all my friends. But yeah, so without the Lemguins, this level is just kind of insultingly easy. Yeah, this honestly, from what I remember, feels like it fit at home in World 1. The World 1 snow level, Skidda's Row. Yeah, I mean, even the, uh, even the hedgehogs are largely inoffensive, which is kind of amazing, because this guy fucking loves his hedgehogs. I mean, it's just, it's just completely open with barely any enemies in here at the start. There's nothing really that difficult about dealing with any of these guys, and then you hit the midpoint, and, I mean... This, I mean, this squawk section is a little weird, but I, I don't know if janky is quite the same as difficult, though. No, this is pretty standard just flying. It's not even particularly difficult flying. And the, the bees aren't really positioned or, like, built upon, like, in, in, like... I don't know, they don't, they don't like, ramp up in difficulty. You started off with a fast B, and you ended with a bunch of slow Bs. Like, I don't know. Alright, so kids, so for everyone playing along at home, go ahead and place your bets now. Is the bonus in the left pit or the right pit? Signposting. It doesn't exist. I'm glad that we did find the Lemguins in the bonus, at least. Although I'm not sure if that was just indifference because he couldn't be bothered to change it, or... I mean, from looking at... <laughs> from looking at the editor, I guess you could change the bonuses. He just didn't, which is probably a good thing. Ah, uh, yes. Bleak. So while we fight everybody's favorite boss, I guess, like I said, it's, it's just kind of, a lot of the stuff in this world is just, just kind of there. Like, Lemgun Lunge is, I don't want to call it like a waste of a level or anything, but it definitely com feels completely inappropriate for being in World 5. The uh, Barrel Drop Waterfall is just kind of whatever feels very barely different right and there's and there's no real threat in it the only difficulty is that if you fall you have to do parts of it again so 
Because the other the other levels I think are are pretty good. Like I said, I like the first one a lot, and uh, Crack Shot Croc is fine. With aside from some design oddities. So like I don't know. Still better than Cotton Top Cove, but you know it's not saying much. <laughs> I can't believe we just exploded a snowman like that. You invade his home. That's right, we invaded his home and immediately set out to just destroy him. It turns out that this is in this ROM hack is in fact part of the extended Donkey Kong canon universe. <laughs> I was just gonna say, turns out that this is, in fact, a Donkey Kong game. Uh, it's time to find that other one. Not here. Yup. It's just right over here. That's all you had to do. Ah, yes, of course. Just, just jump off the side of the waterfall. Just hover off to the left somewhere. It, you'll find it eventually. I'm so glad that I was here to witness this stunning barrel drop climb. Thank you so much for having me here, Ardix. 